Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Moose here with Air Guns of Michigan and look, we have something a little bit different on the bench today that I'm working on. This is one of my brake barrels. Um, this video is going to be about an accessory for a brake barrel and I want to talk to you today about that. My buddy JC over at Air Gun Detectives has has actually started making his own bipods. Um, I mean, he's not making them himself, but he did do the design work for these bipods. And the cool thing about these bipods are, is that they are made for like guns and for example, that don't necessarily have Picatinny rails or can't really have a Picatinny rail, like, like a brake barrel. Now, I know that there are some that barrel clamp to a brake barrel and you can utilize those, um, but that puts unnecessary strain and tension onto the barrel itself. Why not utilize the stock to actually do what it's supposed to do? So let's go ahead and we're gonna push this forward just a little bit. We're gonna open up this box. I'm gonna show you guys what you get inside. You get a set of Picatinny rails. You get four screws and then you get the bipods themselves. Very cool, very cool. Let me see how these things work. I don't know if I'm supposed to twist or pull down. Oh, there we go, pull down. And then the bipods actually uh, lock into their different positions. So this is a thumb button. You just pull it down and lock it on. You've got your, your, uh, your screw here to be able to screw that in. So, and then I believe it looks like these do, they extend and uh, that's even cooler. So let's see, how do they, how does that work? Is it tension? Looks like they just tension. Yep. So you just screw them on tight and then it'll hold that in or you can extend them out. So I did go ahead and do a few slight things to my gun prior to um, starting this video and I'm going to explain exactly what I did uh, because we're going to go ahead and install this puppy onto my brake barrel. So once again we're going to take that box, we're going to set it right there and what I did was I took some regular blue painters tape and what I did was I measured down a quarter of an inch from the top of my stock down and then I laid the the actual tape on there and then what I did was I took one of these mounts and I, I measured it off the top of the mount to the top of the tape and then I used the part on my brake barrel here um, that flat ledge as like my other edge so that way they should be identical on both sides so we're gonna find out if they turned out identical for sure. Um, so now that I've marked these, I just used the regular ballpoint pen. So I'll go ahead and here, let me move this out of the way. I'll go ahead and demonstrate exactly what I did so that you guys can see it. So I laid out my tape, quarter inch from the top, and then I set my Picatinny rail. So where it's top edge, was even with the blue tape. And then its far edge was even with where the barrel meets the breech end here, okay? And then I just held it smooth and then went in and went ahead and marked um, holes. So I did that for both sides and uh, it went relatively easy. That's the nice thing about blue painter's tape is number one, you're not gonna scuff up your stock and number two, um, you know, you can, you know, peel it off if you make a mistake and they don't look like they line up and then you can go on your way. Now, the other thing you're going to want to keep in mind is, is you want to make sure that when you're drilling your holes, I'm going to tap my holes out with a drill bit and I'm using a 564 drill bit, um, just to make a pilot hole for my screws. You want to make sure as you're screwing in that it's not going to affect the break of the barrel or, um, you know, go into your tube or your housing or anything. You want to make sure that it's nice and open in there. Um, 
I know that um, when JC did his, um, I think he moved his further back down the breech to get into the meaty part, but this is pretty meaty on my gun. So I just decided to go with this route. So let's go ahead and set my drill bit right perfectly on my hole. And I'm gonna go slow. I don't want to, uh, I don't want to damage the gun in any way. There we go, there's one hole done. We're gonna go ahead and move on to the next hole. And like I said, I'm, I'm just going real gingerly. I don't want the drill to go plunging or sucking down into um, my hole. Now I can remove my tape. And look at that, two perfectly centered holes. So we'll go ahead and take this, flip the gun over. And this is my Crossman Nitro Venom, just for anybody that's interested. It's a 22 caliber. There we go, there's one hole. You can see I'm getting a little more, a little more uh, not as afraid. <laughs> uh, you've done a few. Kind of get a little more, a little more uh, ready for action, I guess you could say. So perfect, perfect. We're going to go ahead and take the top off those screws, lay those out there. These are Phillips head screws. I suppose if you wanted to, you could replace your screws with um, hex heads if you so choose. I'm not that worried about it and uh, you just want to make sure you take your time uh, screwing this in. You want to make sure that you know it's it's not going to split your wood. You might need to go up and drill bit size. Um, me personally I, I hold them up pretty close to one another just to make sure that I've got a good alignment um, as far as like what my drill bit is compared to uh, the size of the screw. And you don't want to you don't want to crank these things in to the point where, like I said, you you end up breaking your wood or splitting your wood or you know doing any damage to your gun, especially if it's an expensive gun. Um, which you know, granted, this one isn't, but it's still a gun, and I certainly want it around. Um, you know, it's going to be handed down to Buck eventually, and you know, and I don't want to give him one with a split stock or anything else. Um, but this is a this is a great little kit, JC man. My hat's off to you, brother. This is this is cool. I know that you had some of these out before, and then you had an issue with your supplier, and uh, you ended up making your own, which is totally cool. Totally cool. I wish I had the uh, the drive to want to do that. And then we're gonna go ahead and stick one of these on there, and go ahead and tighten it up. I'm just gonna fold it forward so that, that way I can lay my gun on its other side. I'm gonna utilize my belly to hold that up. Make sure it locks into the Picatinny rail itself. And voila, just like that. So now we've got a, a brake barrel that we can we can go ahead and break. Just point this in a safe direction. I actually have a target down here. And there you go. Now you've got a bipod on your brake barrel. What a great kit, seriously. If you guys are interested in picking up one of these kits, you can actually go to www.airgundetectives.com and uh, JC's got these available on his site as far as I know. And uh, you can pick one of these up for your brake barrel and finally get off that front bag. Who doesn't love a freaking bipod, man? Oh, it's nice and steady. You know, you can lean into it and it loads up nice. It's got nice 
rubber rubberized kind of feet on it and uh you know folds away either direction so you can actually fold it back if you so choose which i suppose with with a brake barrel if i'm going to be um you know hunting offhand i'm probably going to fold it forward um just to get it out of the way but the nice thing is they're easily removable as well but uh there you have it the uh air gun detectives bipod kit for your brake barrel till next time i'm moose i appreciate you guys joining me and uh checking out the fact that yes i do have brake barrel guns and uh yes i do shoot them on occasion and uh yes now i'm probably going to shoot this one even more so being the fact that you know now i've got a bipod on it so till next time be safe and god bless